All right, so we've got Steve here today. So you said you're corporate. What did you used to do? Uh, I worked in telecommunications and digital media for 20 years in Colorado Springs. Oh, nice. Is that where you are now? Colorado Springs? Yeah, I live in the Springs. Okay, great. Ah, uh, yes, I remember now. Sorry, lots of lots of emails, lots of people. I, I got you. Um, can I see your shirt? Your shirt there, your logo. My, my logo on the very front. nice. It's got the full name stitching in the back. I love it, man. I got That's some. I, I've got some people I've known for a while, so they took care of some things for me fairly inexpensively. So, very nice, so, man. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, how long you been? When did you start your painting company? Uh, I actually incorporated at the first part of February, but didn't really start trying to do anything in earnest until April. Okay. Uh, I did all the paperwork side of it uh, and, and the backup. And, and I've done this for the paint doctor, if you know that name, down in Pueblo for a couple summers. And some friends of mine own Two Men in a Brush. So if you're familiar with Southern Colorado painting, those are two of the more, like the larger companies. And uh, just decided I was going to do it. And I'm, well, I'm with you, actually, because you've been reaching out to me the right way, which is drip emails. Uh, and I failed enough up front with a bunch of money. <laughs> <laughs> no. That... But just some ideas and some ways that I was directed didn't work the way that I wanted to. And I was doing a lot of waiting for things. So two I'm just times. curious, what, what were some of those mistakes? Uh, I went after the subcontractors too quick. And then when I couldn't come through with the jobs, it was like the boy that cried wolf. So that's number one. Uh, the money mistake was less important, I think, although it was uh, Valpac advertising here in town. Gotcha. Is huge, and if you want to know exactly, I could tell you on the back end. I don't want that recorded, but it ended up being about a. You don't need to say it. <laughs> Dollar loss. No, the loss isn't the big deal. It's just some other stuff that I found out after the fact. Got it. And some other things. So, <laughs> how uh, much was the loss? About four grand. Okay. Hey, it's you're in a good spot if that's not a problem for you. Some people would be toast losing four grand straight out the gate. So it's good, man. You're still here. Not, not a problem, but I plan to do some things. I like, I bought a truck for this and put a down payment on it and yeah. knew that this was going to go out. So I knew I was going to have about $10,000 out committed from the day that I started doing advertising. With the truck nice. and uh, it was just not recouping it in the way that I thought I would initially. That's caused some angst, but also led me to your program. So, yeah. And, and you, when did you get the program and how's it going so far? Last Wednesday. Oh, okay, great. So you're fresh. Yes. Yeah, so you go through it much? What's that? Have you had a chance to go through it much? Uh, I've gotten to the part in the sales process. Uh, okay. My son's going to start going door to door. He's a college kid, and so Perfect. is one of my buddies. They came over last night. We did some training. I gave him some shirts, and they went and failed for an hour in my neighborhood. And uh, we're going to build on, on on that. But uh, yeah, I've gone through the parts that I thought were important, other than subcontractors, and really just trying to figure out how to put the processes that when I sold corporate jobs were there, Salesforce, all that into, okay, I've got to do this on a daily basis. Got it. I don't want to knock doors. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Uh, no, that's yeah. a good setup, man. And um, keep me posted on how they're doing. I, you're not alone, man. Door to door is just such a great opportunity, but you know, it's, there's these nuances with it that are, it's just crazy, man. These, the, I tell people like, you got to have a perfect pitch, but perfect is subjective. And that's the problem is your, your version of perfect is different from my version of perfect. And I mean like perfect, like I'm crazy about it. So my business partner, Ben was out training our guy, one of our, he was out training a couple marketers the other night, mm -hmm. jumping in to, to see what was going on. Cause they're not doing as well as we expect them to. And the feedback he gave this guy was the timing of when you're handing the customer, the flyer, is weird. You need to hand it five, half a second earlier. Mm -hmm. And he went from getting like a couple leads in a couple hours to like seven leads in the next couple hours or something like that. There was another time I was working with this girl, Mary years ago. She got one lead in the first hour and I role played with her. I'm like, something's a little off. You, we need to fix the timing of when your pen hits your paper. Mm -hmm. Cause it's supposed to be this assumptive like, yeah, so just, you know, I saw you had some peeling paint. So I just want to give you a free estimate. And it's, it's natural. But she was like, hey, yeah, I noticed you had some peeling paint, so I just want to give you a free estimate. And it was this pause, and it wasn't natural. And I'm like, we got to get that timing down and have that seem natural. And she got like 15 leads in the next four hours. Yeah. So it's these little nuances that make a difference. So anyways, if, if they aren't getting results, like post in Facebook group or bring it up. And um, there's been some talk about that. And I've actually even given some people feedback through Messenger from the, you know, just the members group who mm -hmm. I message me your pitch and 
I'll give you some feedback, but I'm thinking about just putting together a much more in-depth detailed door to door training just because it's so valuable. And, um, you know, those little details are, are everything. Well, just from the video and the script, I sent it to him via email. Like I emailed that one video to both of them and they, they work at mile high. They sell nuts and like cotton That's candy. So they, they're willing to walk and they're willing great. to work uh, and they're good kids. So they've got the video, but I know that from, at least from what I used to do that I was never a full scripted guy, but there's something I would always say to begin a conversation to try to ease someone back from the natural shut the door. Like I talked to a guy today. I don't normally talk to him, but I talked to yeah. a guy about pest control. Let him do his whole spiel just to right. hear it. Yeah. <laughs> that like I don't want to do it, but I'm willing to do what I've got to do because I think I can take that experience that I've got. Yeah. Put it in and, and again, I had to steal because I don't know the I, I don't know the script for this. Yes. So I wrote the exact words down on a piece of paper for them yesterday as well. I said, if you right. guys forget, just look at this. Yeah, I good. And that would be my suggestion. I've 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 done door to door for fourteen years and I've had hundreds of door-to-door -door marketers and we've tried i know people are like really smart but mm -hmm. chances are we've tried whatever people are trying you sure. know like people will be like add in they add in this or they try this or they try that i'm like look we've tried it all if something worked better we'd be doing it you know we have dozens of, dozens of marketers come through every year trying different shit and it always comes back to that script so yeah after they say okay that's when you can start doing a little bit then my son can say that's my dad's business if he thinks family yeah going to be important to these people or something like that but up until that point i've told them don't change a thing you're exactly right man and that's how it should be once you get the okay or the yeah sure then you slow it down and you develop the lead and build a relationship but early we got seven seconds to grab their attention and get that lead so yeah. um yeah. cool awesome so that's that uh i actually didn't know if you had an agenda for today i have i wrote some notes no. down perfect no my, my agenda is to help you with whatever you want i appreciate the the story so far and you know, I'm really excited to see how this thing goes off for you. Colorado Springs is a great market. There's loads and loads of houses down there. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not there, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's some positives. I did have help with people that have done this before. Again, not all the, the ideas were great. Some of them yeah. worked, some of them didn't. Uh, but I'm re reevaluating everything. Uh, I've done six jobs. Nice. But I've done four of them myself. Okay, that's uh, fine. And I've won four i've done four or five interior jobs i've done one exterior trim and i've got another one this guy's waiting for money to come in from some type of investment that he's got but yeah. it's our free too and i've walked away from a job where nice. good for you windows looked worse after agreement and i told her i'm not going to do the windows i'm excluded like they were falling apart they need a glazer they were that old a window it. it needed a and i'm just not doing that good but i told her i'd do everything else and i've come back once that's done complete the rest of it, hold 200 bucks back or 400, whatever the portion was. She just wanted someone to do it elsewhere. So nice. I, and, and I work for the bank. Down really the smart. Man. And so part of the problem, I think, is my experience was two, four, two to four years ago down in Pueblo, working with people in Pueblo. Yeah. Which is a bit different than here. And then also going from not caring, because really I was just playing golf that summer. I was still married. And I'd go down there and work four days a week and have everything set up, right? So if someone said, I could just walk away from anything, I think I was as loose as you need to be to sell. Yeah. Now it's me. So I've, I've, I've only won two of 15 exterior bids. Okay. Uh, I think part of it was I had to learn pricing up here. So I was pretty high to begin with. Yeah. Uh, low. And then secondarily, subcontractors, and this, this is where I find some of what you put interesting because it all is by market. I'm, they're asking me a minimum of six to 800 bucks a day to do, do, do work for me. How many guys is that? It doesn't matter if it's a two-man crew or a four-man crew. Okay. There's like, so, they, yeah. So if I tell them it's going to take three days, but it's only two guys, I tell them I'm paying you for three days, even if it takes four, because I know it's two of you. So I worked that out, but I initially had people come and bid my house and then I bid it myself and it was between 4,100 and $5,700 yep. regular home in Colorado Springs. And when I had the subcontractors all come out in April, the least someone would do my house for, for me, was $2,600. Well, that's, that's expected because it's, that's not how it, it's how you're approaching the negotiation there. 
And, and that's that's why I, again wanted this to be the important stuff because that's yeah. where I've not done as well as I should have. Yeah. So um, there. So I'll just kind of I'll kind of walk through this, and I think I just had some other videos about this too. So check out the YouTube channel because th some of these other I, conversations. It's all been subcontracted this week, so it kind of flowed. Yeah. But it's okay because this is a crazy question I get all the time and it's good to keep reiterating it because no matter how many times I've said this, there's people who still don't hear it or don't agree. And I've, man, it just, it's your approach. It's the approach. And the game with subcontractors is there's kind of two sides to it. One is I've got to deliver a great opportunity to someone. I've just authentically got to do that. Mm -hmm. But also, I've got to be the one to determine that it's a good opportunity, not them. Meaning, I got to set the price and I've got to be strong with my price because part of the game with subcontractors is a bluffing game. You know, like, they are, if you let them set the price, they're always going to ask for more than you're going to offer. Mm -hmm. And how you frame what you're going to present to them is, is everything. You know, so... I never talk in percentages. I don't talk, I don't give much detail. I just speak their language and I get on the phone with them and I, my, my pitch is I, I give them what they're looking for basically, which is, you know, I'll keep you busy till October. You know, I'm looking for a long-term relationship. I'm working, I'm looking for somebody who does great work and you just want to show up and do the work. I've got, I, I literally can keep you busy back to back until October if we like working together. Um, I'll pay you the day the job is done. So you don't need to wait a week or two weeks to get paid. Um, I just stole a sub from CertiPro the other day because, well, I don't know why, but I know that he was waiting for a week or two to get paid. And I said, I'll pay you right away. And we'll keep you busy till October. And you don't have to drive an hour to this territory anymore because I have jobs where you're located. Mm -hmm. And so he was pumped. And then I said, okay, cool. So the last thing is, so I, basically I've got unlimited work. I'm looking for a long-term relationship, you know, I, I'll pay you the day the job is done. Um, but obviously the most important thing, man, for you and me is like, it, I, I can tell you what I can afford to pay you on a job, but you've got to be able to make good money for that. You know, like I want you making good money. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do when we get off the phone is I'm going to just send you a text message with a picture of one of my jobs and just like some specs on it. Like what kind of paint we're using, the prep work we're doing. And, you know, I'll say, hey, here's a house. Here's the info you need. And I'll tell you what I can afford to pay you. And, you know, if I say, hey, Steve, I can pay you 2000 bucks, then that would include you buying the materials with that two grand. So I'll pay you 2000 you buy the materials, you do the job, I pay you two grand the day it's done. Sound good? Okay. So you have them buy all the materials because I typically provide all the materials. I do. And I pay them labor. Yeah, they'll buy the materials. And um, it's just a convenience thing. The downside is obviously I don't get the credit card points and I don't get, you know, all this stuff, but it keeps it nice and clean. They can use my paint discount though. And so I'll also include in that text what my, cause that, for, that might not be a big pull for you yet. Cause you don't probably don't have as good a pricing as I do yet, but because of our volume, we've got better pricing than any sub that works for us. Okay. So we say, Hey, you can use our pricing by the way. So we're doing this job. We're using resilience paint, one coat, there's minimal prep. Um, and our price for resilience is 32, whatever, or I don't know what it is, but it's this price. And you know, that's the price. Let me know if that, that pricing looks like you can make good money on it. Yeah, mine's like 40. So yeah, right there, there's a... Oh, I don't. I, I like pulled that number out of my ass. That, that's... <laughs> well, I, I pulled the number out of my ass is, is my, uh, my point. Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah, because I don't know what our pricing actually is. My production team manages that. But anyways, my... Uh, so when I kind of present it that way and I say, here's the price, and I've already teed up the other benefits because there's more it's about value. I'm adding them, not just price. And man, they're like, people can sniff someone who doesn't have confidence too. Mm -hmm. And they'll work. You know, will be like, no man, I need more. You know, my rookie, my newer production managers will get worked on prices. You know, like I've really got to train them on how to hold a strong line with pricing. And I teach them what I, you know, one thing I teach them is how we come up with our prices. And we've got a guy, I put this out in an email this week. About, did you see the one about like an example of an amazing subcontractor? I briefly perused that one. I didn't see that one. As here's the, here's the, short, the short version of it. The guy produces about 20 grand a week for us. Oh, see that one. He makes about two to 3,000 a week. He makes a couple thousand dollars a week. 
on our stuff. And, and so the other, so that's the first thing is like, you're always the one doing all terms. Now, what happens when a job actually is underbid? So we send a sub and we say, Hey, we're going to pay, this just happened last week. Say we'll pay 2,500 bucks for this job. And they say, um, I need more, I need more money on this. Well, we're never going to negotiate. We just have a no, a zero policy on negotiating. Mm -hmm. But what I will do is I'll say, sorry, I can't negotiate. And I'll go to another person and offer him a little bit more. So it's always on my terms, not on theirs. Because you have this slippery slope where like you can't get into this game where you start negotiating. Because if you negotiate on this one, he's going to negotiate on the next one. He's negotiating on the next one. And now you have this issue because you're telling a client, we're going to start on this day, but then your contractor gets out there and he's got you by the balls because he's like, I need 700 more to start this job. And you're like, I either need to like tell the customer, Hey, never mind, We're not starting today and get somebody else here. So I just, it's a no negotiation policy period. Gotcha. And if someone's asking for more money constantly, I just say, Hey man, I just can't negotiate. Like this just won't work. And I'm sorry. I like you. You do a great painting job. I, I wish we could work together, but this is my pricing. If it doesn't work for you, you know, I'll be sad to see you go. Mm -hmm. And, that, um, and that's a great point. Cause when I was in Pueblo, I was provided the guys. And then after two jobs, when they knew that I was going to pay them fair to begin with, they didn't really negotiate. And if correct. someone wanted to get that done, I'd be like, how much would you guys do that for? Cause you're here. And if it was 200 bucks, I'd tell the homeowner, give them cash, just give them yeah. 200 bucks. There was probably enough pain anyways. And they were always happy. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I hadn't thought about not doing the materials because that's one of the things that I, and not that I want to control everything, but that's how I build my credit and some other things is through that side of it. But it's Got something, it. so. Yeah, it just keeps it easy, man, because now I don't need to track it. I don't need to pull money out of their pay to make it even and my margins are stuck. And so it just keeps it clean so we can just focus on like our customers and bringing in work and scheduling. I don't need to be like counting pennies every day, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why we, that's why we do it that way. Gotcha. And I know that my business is going to evolve hopefully quickly. I've got a property management company I've signed up with. So nice. what I don't want to do is I don't want to get so out of the realm of things that I don't get the thing that's going to build my business, which is the ex exterior homes. And I know that's what it is. Yeah. So I almost have two paths for my time right now. Cause that's, I live by myself. I've got a dog Nice. in college and I'm divorced. So yeah. I've got time to put in to get to 10 to 20 hours a week as I, as I build this thing up and uh, talking about not negotiating is a, is a very, very important thing. Uh, and then on the estimate side, I don't know what the reason for that was. I, I might've been at least in my own head because I've had the boy who cried wolf with a bunch of subs. So I have to yes. start the number. Yeah. Uh, I might've even showed that weakness to clients because you know, I'm coming in and tell them, I'm, no, I'm going to be in the middle, but I should be a little bit lower, but I'm going to take advantage of it. Right? Yeah. I just need to eat the 300 bucks. If I could eat the 300 bucks to go from 2,300 to 2,000, which is another thing you've talked about is you pay them a little bit more to begin with and then you step them down. Yes. Well, a little bit of both. Like I'll pay a little more and I'll slowly either find new guys that do as good or better work, but will work for less because I have more confidence. So it's how I frame the whole thing. Mm -hmm. or yeah, I'll literally start paying them a little bit less and get back to a more fair thing because I have more value to provide now. Um, but I would, you've got so much margin early on. You just want to make sure you're at that 50% margin before you bring on employees, mm -hmm. meaning sales reps and production managers. Cause if you bring on a sales rep and they start selling and then you raise the price, the second they have a sales slump, they're going to blame you even though it's not the price it's their ineffectiveness in sales, but they'll blame the price because it's been raised. It's like, no, look, we've raised prices almost every year and our sales rate's gone up every year. It's not price. It's never price. Um, and same with production managers. Like if you're paying subs this, this percent, and then all of a sudden you're paying them 50% instead of 55, mm -hmm. when they can't find good subs or their subs are asking for more money and you're saying no, they're gonna blame you and be like, well, you're not paying them enough. You used to pay them 55 and you're like, you know, so you just don't want to set that expectation, then change it once you bring employees on. But mm -hmm. right now you don't need those margins. So use that to your advantage. And then I have a, I've, I think to, there's just going to be a couple things in the um, sales part of the course that'll probably help. You know, there'll probably be some, like you said, you're just getting into that part. 
Yeah, and, and the estimating, I mean, a lot of the like tips you gave to get started, I mean, I've done a lot of those things. Yeah. I walk them around the house. Uh, it's interesting, like I said, I know the people that own Two Men in a Brush, and he was telling me that he always sat down and did the bids with them. Like, it, it, no one's trying to hurt me. They just do commercial stuff now. So, yeah. Every idea is different. What I'm trying to do is put a process in place that I follow every time yeah. that has been successful. And that's why I'm talking to you. Yeah. Because I, so I think it's going to be helpful. Yeah. And once you get through that whole sales process and implement it, um, I think you'll see that sales ratio change. I think you'll see a couple things that'll make a big difference. Um, and then if you're still having issues, did you sign up for the sales mastery thing? No, not yet. Okay. So um, what I would do is if you're still having trouble, if you're still seeing that sales rate under like 33%, post in the Facebook group or shoot me an email and we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit. Um, and then once you get it, you know, you might want to look at that sales mastery thing at some point if you're still staying low, you know, because this is where we dig into a lot of nuances. And sometimes it's these little things that, you know, make a big difference make a big difference. So. I've been told three times that if it was the interior, they would have chosen me, but they had to choose someone else for the exterior because of warranties and length of being in business. It's, so, okay. there, so there's something that someone was using against me. Sure. And I, and I need to find a way to make a strength. Right. You know, I am new. You're right. I'm also yeah. So here's what this price should be. This is an idea. Tell me if you think it's stupid or not. Uh, if I know, a, if I know the median price for that house can be $4,400 put that number down and tell them, I know that this is about the median value of what I should be doing this for. I've only been in business a little while and I'm going to give you a cut of X off of that. If you'll do something today to help me build my business. Yes. Yeah. I would, uh, I would price it with the estimating formulas mm -hmm. and, and not say, cause then you don't want your price to seem arbitrary. You know, like I know this is a median price, for example. No, no. Based upon what your square footage is, what we're doing, the prep all of the components going into it this is what i'm going to come up with so most everyone's going to be within five to ten percent of this number depending gotcha. on what their margins are, are in general yeah yeah so i'll uh, a couple things one is i just never talk about a competitor like i wouldn't even talk about like that there's other estimates or anything like that's just kind of coming from like i'm competing and my frame is look like i want you to hire whoever you're most comfortable with if it's me great if you can get someone else you're just as comfortable as with me, but you could save money. I would recommend you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm, uh, but let me kind of answer that your actual question. So I would be curious what their concern is fundamentally. So if they say it's the warranty, then I can say, look, I, I get it. So the bottom line is a warranty is there. You know, you should, a warranty is there because you should never have to use it. Absolutely. So I'm going to address their core concern. So the concern about the warranty is like, first of all, I fully intend on being in business, but I get that like my warranty doesn't have as much weight as someone else's might because they've been in business longer. So here's what I, I can do. First thing is I can, I'll take, I'll like show you, I'd be willing to just like show you the prep work. And, you know, obviously we're going to use the paint and all the same materials, but I just be willing to like show you the prep work. That's really the key if someone's shorting and prep. So chances are you shouldn't even need to use a warranty if people do the right prep work. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd be willing to do, because I am getting started, is I'll knock 300 off of this price because I know you're taking a chance on me. Gotcha. So use the, I'm going to work better than everyone else to begin with, and I'm going to prove it to you. And because you're giving me the shot, I'm going to give you a little bit extra cheese yeah. back. So if they trust me as much as anybody else and there's just that one thing, now all of a sudden they get to choose the guy they want and they feel like they're getting a special deal. And I'll use that across the board if they're like, you don't have many referrals. You don't, I'm like, I get it. You know, so here's the thing. We're in this industry. We're like, the bottom line is how I deliver a great paint job is I do good prep work. I use the right materials and I keep it clean. Like we can both look at the house and know if it looks good you know, as far as the lines and the coverage and all that, as long as I do good prep and I use the right materials, we apply it. Well, that's what constitutes a good paint job. But this industry has a bad reputation, not because of that stuff. It's because of the communication and the lack of follow through and lack of integrity. And I can, get, I can tell you I'm in this business because I know I got those things mm -hmm. and you, you give them your pitch about why you forget everything else. Look, anybody can deliver a paint job. Here's why you should work with me and not some other painter.
This is why I'm an advantage. But look, I know that you're taking a chance on me. And so I'll tell you what, if you guys, and I need some new cut, you know, I need a couple people to help me out. If you'd be willing to do, write me a reference letter when we're done and let me put a lawn sign up in your yard, I'll knock 350 bucks off for you guys taking a chance on me. And I'll lower the deposit to 10%. So there's no risk. And I'm not going to collect this final 90% until we walk the house together and you're satisfied. Gotcha. And that's really close to what I say, but your yeah. confidence, the way it just came natural, so much different than me getting into this mode from doing something different. Yeah. It's all the same. I mean, but I was talking to bank presidents. Now I'm just talking to them at their houses. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Exactly. And so a lot of that's just like, you know, you might still land a couple of those callbacks and be four for 15 and you're in good shape. Um, and that's just your exteriors, right? You've actually done better on interiors. Oh yeah. Interior. Yeah. I'm about, huh. 50? About 50. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well, mostly because I know how long it takes. My ex-wife's a property manager. She had 40 houses. We did all the painting. Yeah. For like 25 bucks an hour. We both, so I know how long it takes to paint a room. Yeah. So, go in and do it based upon basically your numbers is what I almost really do. And I did two bathrooms and a laundry room the other day for 500 bucks. I did two walls for 400, just real quick, took me six hours. Got so it. A little bit of that too. And if I can fill one of those in a week, but only to work one day, it gives me a little bit of income and gives me time to do everything else. So got it. That's what I did at the very beginning too. The really yeah, small stuff. Yeah. I like tomorrow, I'm going to go see a buddy of mine from my karate school, owns a business downtown in the Springs. It's a brick building. It's just trim. He's told me it's 80 by 40. So that's what, 320 feet around? Yeah. 240 around. Trim and gutters. I mean, I can go buy a power washer and I've got a sprayer. Yeah. I could just do that by myself in two days. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, save him some money. Yeah. And do that kind of stuff too. So I'm, I'm willing to do a lot. It's yeah. the out to the doors that I think is the thing that probably if you had to tell everyone what's the most important thing is to start doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're doing all the right things and your crew, I mean, it's only been a week. So I think once you keep getting through the course and start applying that, the other thing is just purely, yeah, I've always told people it's 25 estimate learning curve on, on the sales side. Like you just got to see enough things, get enough confidence and to some degree, like get sick of not signing jobs to where you like, Stop being timid, you know, or uncertain and just like. No, oh, I, I get it. I get yeah. it. So, and, and I'm still doing some home advisor stuff. So I don't buy their leads, but I pick them. So Got it. Their interior stuff now, unless it's like one or two rooms. Yeah. I know that it's something that needs to get done quickly for those cash jobs and exteriors. Nice. So I'm not doing five to six bedroom houses because, hey, they scare me. Yeah. They just do. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want to send people inside someone's house yet unless it's me. And I don't want to spend a week and a half paying someone's house. No, and you're smart, you're smart to do that. I, I think one of the big mistakes people make is they chase money and they chase the big jobs. And the right thing to do is take your time. Because when something goes wrong on a $10,000 interior, it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. It can be a total nightmare. That thing can just destroy you, especially if you don't know, have the experience of how to get out of a problem like that. You could be there a month. So, no, I think it's smart of you to be focused on little jobs to keep cash flow, the exteriors to make your, your money, and 15 estimates down is, is, is great um, as a place to start, and you're getting the door-to-door -door going. I think you're doing all the right things. So I'd be curious to see how things are going in like a few weeks from now. Well, I'll tell you what. When you do a $2,200 job to get it and you make $12 an hour by the time it's all said and done, <laughs> you just don't want to do that anymore. And I've been in <laughs> I bid it at 28 and went down to get it. Got but it. A great referral that I didn't expect I was going to get from a lady that was very hard to deal with the entire time. But in the end, I was the only one there on time. Yeah. Like her referral was excellent. I was totally surprised, afraid of it when it came. Because I told her no a few times, and I don't think she's used to getting told no. Yeah. Like <laughs> on more and more and more stuff. And I'm like, no, I'm not coming in after you guys move in two weeks later to touch up. I'm doing it before you move in. Yeah. Oh, so, man. Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting ride. But again, I appreciate your time. And I don't know. Yeah. Time up. And the fact that there's something out there that like, I think I'm an intelligent guy. I think I, I know sales. But when you do something different, the templates, the paperwork, I was trying to pick off, you know, this stuff all from different areas. Right. And 
having one place makes it worth it almost makes it worthwhile just for the paper right Not even the videos. <laughs> dude i i mean i agree man i mean those those doc just the documentation would take 100 hours to to duplicate but you couldn't duplicate them without all the experience that's behind them i mean that's right yeah so no, I, I'm, I'm like planning on probably raising the price of the course because I'm like, man, there's just too much value in here for me to keep dishing out at this price. And I'm going to make a really, really basic one for people who can't afford it. I've always kept the price low because I don't want to price people out, but I'm like, man, if you really can't afford it, here's a course to go get your first couple jobs so you can afford it. Cause this is, there's a lot in there. So. Oh yeah. And the videos being short for the most part. Yeah. Make it so that it's easier to keep track of what you're doing. Yeah, it's digestible. Because uh, you could do an estimating thing for two hours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I tried not to. I tried to keep them all like 10 to 15 minute videos. Yeah, so I'm, I, I'm actually hoping the process, and I think, I think I wrote down the most important thing to me was the process tracking sheet. So how many people are you seeing? How many yeah. leads are you getting? So that I can track, you know, what my work output is. I'm glad you're doing that because I think not enough people track their numbers. And obviously with your background, that's something you would do, but man, it's so important. And most people don't do it. And it kills me when people aren't doing that. Well, I haven't gone out yet, but I truly believe that if I don't go out, I can't spend enough money to get back in business. Like, yeah. I mean, I can, I just, I'm not going. Yeah. I'll buy a $60 lead here and there. Cause again, home advisor, you click it. Then they, they say, yes, we want this guy to do business with us. Then they call me back or they send me their right. information. Right. So that way I know it's done. Right. You know, but I got 20 something phone calls for six grand. Yikes. Yeah. Hey man, that, that happens. And that's, that's why, you know, I, I tell people like the only thing you should do at the beginning is stuff that takes time or you're trading a money for money for a lead, mm -hmm. not money for a service that will get you leads. You know, like SEO is an example of you're not paying, you could invest in SEO and get no leads because you're paying for the SEO. You're paying for the service. You invest in Valpac, what you're paying for is mail to go out. You might not get any leads. Angie's List, you're paying for membership. You might not get any leads. Lead services where you're exchanging money for lead, like what you're doing with Home Advisor, what we do with Painter Choice, Craftjack, Thumbtack. Like, okay, I can do that and I can do door to door and I can hustle networking with property managers and real estate agents and other professionals. By the way, have you guys had hail down there? Not really recently, but last year. So most of it was July of last year. Okay. So they're coming up on the end of the last big one. Uh, when, when that happens, start calling all the roofing companies. That's right. They, want it, they, they grab the painting contract too, and then they just want to give it away. Yeah. Well, no, we have a lot of that as well. But again, I'm not using excuses. I think the reason I haven't been successful is because I just haven't done enough. Yeah. Uh, but I think I will be successful because my ego didn't get, get in the way of buying this. Yeah. You know, once I figured, okay, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So now maybe take some brain share from someone else yeah. inexpensively. Yeah. Hey man, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a smart thing to do. I mean, I spend a lot of money on that kind of stuff. You can shortcut things with other people's passions and time they put in like rock on. So I, I really hope it helps. I think it will um, oh, yeah. definitely just keep me posted, you know, with how it goes. Once you, uh, you know, three, four weeks from now, I'll, I'll, I'll check in with you. Cause I'm really curious to see how it's going by then. Yeah. And your lead service, what's, what goes, I mean, how is that? They actually go through, is it like a home advisor where they're requesting yeah. in the Colorado Springs area? Yeah. Are they uh, like one-on-one -on -one leads or are they? Would I, go out to believe, I don't think we're exclusive in Colorado Springs. You'd have to talk to someone on the team. I, I think we're, I think it'll go to two, up to four people total. Um, it's 43 That's, bucks a lead. So uh, 43. That's if, if they're the right, if they're what I want, then that's not, not, not a bad No, they're, they're great. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't do – there's – I'm not going to get into the whole lead service industry, but all the leads are uh, customers seeking. There's no repurchased leads, recycled leads from other companies. No, that's crap, crap, so. Like I said, my kids, I'm paying them 10 bucks an hour right now, and then every estimate I get, I'm giving them 10 bucks, And if I sell it, I'm giving them a bonus. Nice. They, they can make 120 bucks if I sell something. Nice. Over a thousand dollars. And I think that that right now is fair for a kid in college to go I agree. on a night a week. I agree. So, all right. If you cool. can think of anything else, let me know. And if you want to have one of your guys reach out to me about your guys' lead service. Sure. Uh, I've got a little bit of budget I was going to spend this month left over that I would invest to, you know, try to get some things done.
Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll have uh, someone give you a ring. Um, was your phone number in my email? Uh, very likely. Uh, I can give you my business number or my cell number, whatever's easiest. Let's see. That, uh, I think I've got it here. So, yeah, I'll have, uh, I'll have someone give you a ring. All right, cool. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm going to check in on in, in a few weeks and hear how things are going. If there's uh, anything you're running into or have questions about, just shoot me an email or bring it up in the Facebook group. Are you in there, by the way? I haven't joined it yet, but that's just because I forgot to do it when I got it. I spent three hours the first day on videos, cool. <laughs> and then I had jobs. So Okay, I'm going to send you a reminder to join that group because that's a really good resource. So there you go. There's there's an email in your inbox with a link to it. So just click join that. And gotcha. Get you and it's a private group set up for Facebook. I'm in another men's group that's like that too. So yeah. Yep. Crazy. Exactly. Cool. All right, man. Well, it was, it was good talking with you, Steve. And uh, we'll touch base in a few weeks. You as well. I hope Northern Colorado is as beautiful as it is down here today. It is, man. It's about damn time. Yes, it is. Have a great day. All right. Thanks, Steve. Talk to you soon. Right, bye.